so in this video we're going to put it in a case like this simply because you can buy them like with a case complete and you can plug and play ready to go but at this time i just wanted to check it out as a main board i come to be honest like this was dirty cheap for me to buy i have a couple of these things laying around so i just wanted to see is this like say android box but basically that is what it is like an android box is it worth picking this thing up is this worth like this saga 5000 or is it just another crap box that you need to avoid i know you can like upgraded at Pandori, or that's what they told me so that's going to be interesting for another video but for now let's see how you we're going to get plug and play but plugging this thing in is, is going to be super easy so i already like removed the old pandora's box and yeah depending on what kind of casing you're having you can see like we have one big gigantic gap here this is one of my favorite cases because it doesn't matter like how this thing looks or how the connections are aligned you can just basically plug this thing in screw it in connect everything and you're ready to go we'll show you later on like how you do this the connection over here we do have like two usb so you can basically hook up an extra controller you can even set this thing to four play configuration with a usb hub pretty damn cool volume control settings vga and hdmi out and of course the input for 12 volt so the thing that we need to do is plug this thing in here so what i love about this thing is like you can plug in the cabling like this this of course on one player so we have less cables but plug it in here then we have basically i just not going to screw it down so it's easier to show you so then we have one cable for the speaker so it basically gives you audio you can also use like the external one for external audio if you want to we don't need to like the on and off switch because already like implemented in basically in tiny like say jumper you can remove it plug it in, in here and use the on and off switch at the back so the configuration can be different for you guys but again like this is plug and play solution and if you have like one big gap you can just plug it in and it's like super easy to do but Pandora's box can be found in many kind of devices. Think about a game system, a dual player arcade stick that comes in different kind of versions, qualities, and also features. But in the end, when it comes to the Pandora box, it is more of the same, despite basically having like a different outer shell. And I think one of my favorite ones are to play does have like the portable version that comes complete with a portable edition that you can just open up and just basically play your games on the go. It's kind of portable, of course, because it's still clunky, but you have all kinds of different versions when it comes to this. But let's look at the main board itself and the menu, because the menu is similar to the Pandora's box number six and the DX and basically all of those ones. So this is more like the counterpart when it comes to the Pandora's box jungle. In overall, it's not bad at all, don't get me wrong, but let's get into the settings. Because with the settings, I did see some interesting, weird looking settings. For example, the app module, I've never seen it before. Another thing is like we can adjust the upper USB drive. So what you can do with that basically is like saying if you want to use both for, let's say, the game pads. So I had the first problem when booting this thing up. They couldn't like basically like use my controller. So I need to implement it in their arcade stick. And we can adjust it over here. But I have like the image enhanced we're just going to put it on disable we have a timer there is so much stuff you can basically change out and the interesting thing is like we can configure this thing for all kinds of purposes for example an arcade machine but if you want to use like a game box you have like one joystick what i'm having now with three game pads but there are some kind of interesting things like having two joysticks and two game pads or just four game pads so actually you can use this thing like an game system so the options when it comes to the joysticks it's way more better than all the other ones i've reviewed here okay so beside that it's all the same stuff the upper usb port already mentioned before you can even put it for pc if you use this main board inside let's say a pandora's box you can use your pandora box actually as a yeah, controller it's kind of interesting something i don't use or not use at all but it's kind of funny that they give you the options to change it one and also the audio output can be changed, something you don't see very often, or this is one of the first time I've seen it with a cheaper box. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this menu. And the reason why, like, don't get me wrong, the search function works perfectly. Like, it works very fast and I really like it. But when you're looking at the category, it's a little bit messy. You're only having like categories linking like adventure games, 3D games, fighting games, but you cannot search for let's say in certain platforms. Think about NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, they are on here, but you need to find them through all of the, I say, jungle of files. A little bit of a bummer, if you ask me, and a missed opportunity. And also the naming are completely messed up sometimes. The unfortunate thing is, like when you're going to boot up a game, think about a 60-bit game, there is no quick load and quick save. And yeah, I tried the main game, and with the main game, let's go back with the main menu, and we still don't have a quick load, quick save. We can find it, but it is not like presented every single game. 
And for example, with PlayStation 1, we do have like quick load, quick save. So what the hell happened on the back end? So in my opinion, it's a big, big, big mess. We're starting off with the Mortal Kombat benchmark simply because if you're going to look into some other games like Killer Instinct, they don't run at all because these boards are not powerful enough. But let's take a close look at the first game just to see actually how good it runs. <laughs> And then we have like the Mortal Kombat number four. So with the PlayStation one, we do have like a great performance and overall, but when it comes to controls, uh, I'm using a sick button layout and with some games, we will have problems with this because we were needing more buttons. Fight. <laughs> One of the great examples, if you want to play some Twisted Metal 2, are you having like six button layout? At least we need to have like eight buttons to get every single function to work. So at this point, I cannot really shoot or shoot rockets. So this game is, in my opinion, unplayable. But when it comes to Neo Geo Arcade, we do have like great performance, only this widescreen, but besides that, everything runs pretty damn good. <laughs> When you're looking at the overall performance of this thing, it's nothing like interesting when you're looking at all the other Pandora's box we have reviewed here on the channel. But they are making them way cheaper now. Like when you're looking at the price you're paying for this one, particularly when you're looking at the original DX, yeah, we do have like significant differences with the pricing. You also see like the chips are trying to be a little bit different with the chips itself. Yeah, nevertheless, yeah, we do have like the same performance. Let me know in the comments what do you think of this solution. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you in the next video.